Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Cyclops and a Slobble, and uh, I'm in a bathroom. So it's a bit echoey here. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. Okay. Alright. Put a blanket into the bathroom. Why did I bring a blanket into the, into the bathroom? Well, I brought a blanket into the bathroom to absorb the sound. And uh, maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. But hey, uh, this week's topic is um, is uh, gender queer and dating. Before I get into this, I do want to uh, read some letters that I got. Some housekeeping is in order here. Um, first one is by Anarchistic Alien, who writes, "I remember one of I remember when one of the childhood friends, who was like a little sister to me, shot herself in the head." when she was 14 and I was 15. At the funeral, they painted her like a, up like a doll. They stuck her in glasses she always refused to wear and talked about how silly, giggly, and always kind she was. No mention was made of how she died. Um, if I may interject, perhaps parenthetically here, uh, maybe because they were guilty that uh, she got a hold of a gun when she was 14. Maybe there's some guilt there, and maybe that's the reason why no one brought it up. That's just a thought, though. There's a definite conflict. I'm sorry, there's a definite disconnect between how parents think of their children and how they actually are. And on that last point, I agree. There is. Um, not necessarily with, with all cases uh, with parents, but there definitely is that disconnect. And I'm sorry for your loss, uh, quite frankly, of someone who was like a sister to you. Um, self to non-self writes, my parents' wake was much the same, but the service was for the living and planned by our family and their beliefs. I went to respect her life as we spent 16 years of it together. It was a dark time, but all of life encompasses light and dark. So it's okay to have depressing videos and to talk about difficult parts. It's a part of what makes us human. Thank you for sharing your story and for naming the stink eye. Love that image. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I agree. There's a lot of contrast in life sometimes, and uh, it's silly to ignore that contrast and pretend as if everything is gray and happy at the moment. And I'm sorry for your loss of someone who you spent 16 years with, um, be that the, the entire your entire relationship or not I don't know but um, sorry mate uh, last message here is by uh, Quainar um, Quainar Quainar I could be pronouncing that wrong if I am correct me damage done Quainar writes I had a friend and a traveling companion who died of anorexia long before anyone knew what that was. I felt like I failed her somehow, but I was only 15, and what did I know? She was so sweet, she died in a mental hospital a few months shy of her 18th birthday. And um, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, try not to blame yourself. It's pretty easy to keep blame on yourself but that's not necessarily healthy and you were 15 and I'm sure you did everything that you could do and um, so uh, Matt I just watched your video and it was awesome I really liked it you and your partner uh, who your partner who um, uh, I forgot your partner's name I totally forgot her name I, I apologize but she said that um, that, uh, when she tells people that, uh, that you're genderqueer, they usually go, oi, well, he's gay, right? And, uh, um, I think that has a lot to do with choice, quite frankly. I've, I've definitely encountered that attitude and have been thinking about it for a while. And I think it has to do with the lack, lack of respect for choice. And I think, it has to do with people deriving your sexuality from choices that you have made as if you had no choice in the first place. I think people um, will be like, oh, well, you're clearly flaming as hell, and uh, 
um, the gayest person I know, and um, so obviously I have no choice in this, and, uh, you know, poor you, and, um, and I'll respect that, because you had no choice, because you had no choice, I'll respect that, and, uh, but I won't respect choice, I think is what's going on, and I think a lot of people will, um, will, uh, in the back of their heads be like, what, you chose to be queer? Why would you choose to be queer? And uh, I think that's going through people subconsciously, well, whether it's it's defined or not. Um, and I think that has a lot of overlap with, with bisexuality and people not respecting bisexuality, because I think um, just by definition, you, bisexuality, like, by definition, there is a choice there that needs to be made, unless you're pan, or, well, that, then that's not bi, is it? Unless you're, well, pan, sexual, pan, um, what's the, what's the term? Poly, unless you're poly. Um, um, so, but still, yeah, if you're, if you're dating one person, like, uh, there is a choice that obviously is there and so to i think people are keen on deriving your sexuality from your choice again as if you had no choice in the first place because clearly with bi people you are making a choice and people are like oh no can't make choices can't make choices with this stuff pal you back right up obviously you're obviously you're you're completely straight or completely gay or whatever because whatever because there's no choice and i think uh i think um genderqueer and alternative queer people, queer people who aren't necessarily mainstream, queer people for whom there is a lot of choice in what you do and in what I do, frankly, is a choice. Like, I could be in the closet. I could. Um, I probably wouldn't kill myself. But, you know, I could do it. Like, it still would be something that I could do. It was still something that I have done. I mean, uh, what, are you gay after you come out? No, you're gay before you come out or your whatever before you come out, your, your sexuality before you make the choice to experience your sexuality. And uh, so, yeah, so choice, I think, needs a little bit more respect, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, today's topic. Oh, wait, before I talk about today's topic, I did watch the most androgynous movie in the world. It was awesome. There's this movie called, I'm going to take this one out because it's bothering me. There was this movie um, called uh, um, called uh, um, Summertime 1999, and it's this movie that uh, these these boys in this boarding school l- love each other in some way. One of them who who has died, and uh, all the boys are played by girls, and all the girls are dubbed, and it's androgynous as hell. And I have no the fuck idea what's going on quite frankly. I know the general plot, but it's all in Japanese, and I don't speak Japanese. So I found some English subtitles today, and I'm gonna, I'll post a link down in the description, and if it, if it, if you click it and it's broken, uh, try it the next day, and maybe it'll be there, so you can watch this movie, because <laughs> I'm interested, I'm gonna watch it tonight and, and uh, get an idea of what's going on, but it looks cool as hell. It looks cool as hell, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, so, genderqueer and dating. Um, (laughs) so this week's topic is genderqueer and dating. I don't know. Okay, the battery on my recorder died. Apologies. Gender, queer, and dating. I don't know what to say on this. Um, Because I don't really date people. Um, Like I said, well, I guess my definition of dating is is going out seeking dates with people and going out on dates and these things. And uh, so in that sense, I don't really date people. Um, But like if someone comes up to me and is like, hey, you're right awesome, let's go out. And I think they're right awesome too. Then uh, I'll probably date them, and uh, maybe something will come of it, and maybe it will, uh, maybe uh, maybe we'll be in a relationship. So I guess in that sense, I'm dating people, but I'm not actively seeking out dating people anymore, quite frankly, because I don't like that negotiation as a genderqueer person, as a non-mainstream person, if that makes sense. 
um, I don't like that negotiation. I feel like there there is a negotiation there. Like you go, you sign up to like OK Cupid, and they go, all right, um, choose now. And I'm like, all right, um, can't get passes. Can I? Um, and uh, so I usually choose uh, gay gay woman. Um, but then in my profile, all right, no, 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 blah, 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 gender queer, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, but I don't like that negotiation. I don't like dating people with an expectation of, of, of me fitting into a, a binary, quite frankly. Like when I knock at the door and it opens and it's me, like, what are they expecting? I don't know. Like, so I've, I, frankly, I've kind of given up on it and I date from friends and people I know, people for whom I have some sort of, for whom, like, it is a negotiation when I'm dating people and I tell them about myself. I feel it as if it's a negotiation under the context that, hey, we're going to be dating after this and uh, we're going to be girlfriends and, or whatever, and yay. Um, But I don't like that. I would rather tell someone about myself because I want to tell them about myself. And generally, that's what I do to friends. Generally, that's what I tell people who I'm friends with. Because I want to tell them about myself. Because I, that's what just what I want to do. Not under the context that we're dating. And uh, so there isn't that pressure there that I feel that there is with dating. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not really dating. Um, but, you know, I'm meeting new friends. And if something comes from one of those friends, fucking awesome. Uh but, uh, yeah, so that's my thought on dating. Um, so sorry if it wasn't maybe a bit convoluted and perhaps not very com- complete, but thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. I'm going to take a nap now because I'm tired. And uh, um, so happy Wednesday and uh, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.